Decades of tea riders have likely wondered, just who is Andrew? John Albion Andrew was the 25th governor of Massachusetts, holding the office during the Civil War. He was also a fierce abolitionist who defended John Brown after his raid on Harper's Ferry in 1859. Everyone knows he's an abolitionist. Uh, he wins by very wide margins in the Commonwealth all the times he's re-elected as governor. Kenny Soren Wangs Rishinali of the Massachusetts Historical Society is an expert on John Andrew, who also was a skillful politician. He leads the Massachusetts delegation to Chicago for the convention that nominates Abraham Lincoln. But who is John Andrew turns out to be something of a who knew on top of a who knew, literally. The last time this painting here at Faneuil Hall was taken down, it led to a discovery which is still something of an unsolved mystery to this day. I tell people that I love dirty paintings because that's my business. Peter Williams, a painter in his own right, has restored many significant works, including a portrait of Robert Gould Shaw, who was chosen by Governor Andrew to command the fabled 54th Massachusetts Regiment. 20 years ago, it was the painting of Andrew that Peter Williams was hired to restore, but appraisers had also made a startling discovery. And they say, we have reason to believe that there's a charcoal drawing of Abraham Lincoln attached to the back of this portrait. And I realized that was a pretty big deal. It was a pretty big deal. Williams was tasked with removing the hidden drawing. In small scale, this is what came in to you here. Exactly. Had a big ornate frame. Yes. And then you flipped it over. What we saw lying before us was an amazing art historical discovery. It was an eight foot drawing of Abraham Lincoln on very frail, thin paper. It had been drawn by the same man who created the Andrew portrait it hid behind, American painter William Morris Hunt. The sketch was for a full-size Lincoln portrait, which Hunt completed after Lincoln's death in 1865. Unfortunately, the Lincoln portrait was destroyed in a fire. All that remains is a small model of it by Hunt, now on display at the Museum of Fine Arts, which also today stores and preserves the Lincoln sketch for its owner, the city of Boston. What's your own thought for why this ended up behind the John Andrew painting? He may have felt a real special relationship with the with a portrait of Lincoln that he had made and, and wanted to connect it to Governor Andrew. Many theories, but the main mystery remains. Why did the artist hide a sketch of Lincoln with the fiery abolitionist John Andrew? They were married to the same cause, and it didn't matter if anybody ever found out that there, it was a drawing. It was saved. Both men committed so much to the cause of the Union, to the preservation of the Union, and it seems fitting if uh, you were an artist who had painted or sketched these two individuals that you would put them together. Today, in a way, in one building, they still are. When it comes to sites around Boston where key roles were played in opposing slavery, some are well known and easy to find, like the historic African Meeting House on Beacon Hill, which for a time was the center of the abolitionist movement. Other sites, though, are more far-flung and often as inconspicuous as they chose to be 200 years ago. They named it Liberty Farm, and that was back in 1847. They started letting escaped slaves come through, and it's thought that thousands of slaves passed through this property over time. Now a National Historic Landmark in Worcester, it was home to Stephen and Abby Kelly Foster, lifelong Quakers and ardent abolitionists. Their Liberty Farms public name belied its role as an active stop on the famed Underground Railroad. What makes Liberty Farm unique is how much is preserved here. The stained glass window, which served as a signal to runaway slaves. The wooden sleeping bunks deep in the cellar. And as present owner Poppy Ibabau Gray pointed out, one of several emergency hiding spots. You can pull the shelves off. And then the backing comes out. And there was a room for at least one person. Wow. But it would allow somebody to completely be hidden. 
Exactly. Ibabao Gray and her husband Joshua are now raising their own children, where Abby and Stephen Foster once raised theirs. The history, it's deeply rooted in the house, and I do feel it when I'm here. In a quiet Worcester neighborhood, an enduring home that, in name and history, really is all about liberty and freedom. Truly fascinating, and Liberty Farm owners Joshua and Poppy hope to turn the house into a B&B where visitors will be able to both to stay overnight and appreciate the unique and moving history of the property up close. And if you'd like to see it today, and especially over the summer months when flowers bloom all around the property, we'll have information on our website. Coming up, yes, there's an app for that.